welcome back. I wasn't gonna do a video tonight. I was just gonna come swing in, take a look, but some interesting things. We have the master bedroom wall up. So you have your two windows, bed goes here. That's gonna be the wall to the living room. Then there is a plumbing wall here, which comes out halfway. Then you're gonna have your two sinks. Then you will have in here, this is the toilet and shower, which the shower I have to somehow get on the floor here before they frame the rest of it in because it doesn't fit through the doors. Complicated, I know, but it's apparently pretty normal. And then upstairs, the bathtub, which also doesn't fit, they're gonna crane that in when they have the crane here doing everything. And then this is the main wall facing the pond. So you have from there over, that's utility room or a closet, not sure yet. Then you'll have like washer dryer, maybe extra freezer, something like that in here. And then when you're doing laundry, wow. Look at that view, minus the camper. Imagine that gone. Wow, so pretty. And you've got the main entrance. Oh yeah, the other entrance for the mudroom is gonna be here somewhere. Main entrance. I'm gonna do some stuff out there to make it look nice. And then this will be the kitchen window. So if you can imagine doing dishes, probably be about yay. Probably well, maybe a little closer arm length. And look at that view. Who doesn't want to wash dishes looking at the pond and nature and all that stuff? And then this, this is the wall that's actually gonna make the house look somewhat special. So this is our fake chimney, I guess you could say. This is where we are gonna put on all of that um, vinyl shake. Or actually, no, sorry, not the vinyl shake, the vinyl stone. So it's like panels of stone, but it's vinyl siding pressed to look like rock. Budget option to get rock, basically. And compared to going to that styrofoam stuff, that stuff is junk. Everything I read said don't get it because the sun will just eat it up, especially facing straight south pretty much. Our nice big windows to get in a whole bunch of sunlight and everything to help heat the house in the winter. And then in the summer, it'll get hotter, but there's like some fancy sun stop stuff, so it's supposed to get kind of hot, not too hot. And then all we did was we just bumped it out a little bit. So it's just gonna stick out of the house a little bit, give a little bit of some definition to it. And then I believe in this portion here, this is where the shake is gonna go. It's gonna go like that somehow. Something like that, I think. Yes, oh yeah, no, sorry. This is the interior. So this is what's gonna be on the inside but then you have a roof truss that's gonna come all the way up to here. That's what that red line is. So that's where the roof truss is. It's gonna come out and then that's, so the roof outside is steeper than inside. Inside, this is our ceiling angle, which is basically, I think, I think it's 18 feet almost. Something like that, 18 feet to here to where the ceiling's gonna be. Gonna be tall, but that's what's gonna make it look pretty. Yeah, and then uh, on the inside, basically we're gonna have a mirror image of this, thicker though, and then that's where we're gonna have the stove will be at the bottom, and then we're gonna do um, some stone or something around it because it has to be non-flammable or non-combustible, whatever they call it. Then the rest of it up, we want to do like some barn wood or pine or something a little different. We don't want to go with just rock, right? We want to make something a little little different and then something we can do ourselves, right? Like as much finishing stuff that we can do, we're trying to do just because it's, it's going to be expensive. This will be the most expensive thing that I do in my life. So we're gonna do it right. But yeah. Oh, our foam, 
you see we have, let's zoom in over there. We have rocks on it. They took some off, I guess, today when they were here. They had the foam, well, the foam was there. We had a big storm, took all the foam and threw it into the trees. It was impaled on all these branches. There's holes in it everywhere. First, we got the bear eating it. Then it looks like the squirrels are eating it. Now it's blowing away and getting destroyed in there. And that stuff is like 30 something dollars a sheet. So every sheet that gets destroyed is just burning money. But nothing we can do about it. I don't have a shed. Well, I have a shed, but it's full of other stuff for the house that's even more important than that. We thought about getting like a shipping container or something to put stuff in, but those are expensive now. And I mean, with building a house, we just don't have the money to just buy a shipping container and throw stuff in there. And the amount of money that we would save on materials getting damaged is still less than what it would cost to do it. So I don't know. I mean, even if we got a tarp shed, bears has ripped through that. I've got a couple of them here already, but they're full of other stuff. Well, I found something that's not really good. Water. So this is kind of the one spot in here that we keep getting water. So it's probably, I don't know, that's about an inch. That's about eight inches there. So it seems to come down and then get stuck against the bottom plate here. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's just rain or if we have some water coming in somewhere. I'm really hoping that it's just from, uh, we had a big storm, like inches and inches and inches of rain. All the lakes around here are just flooded right now. Some of the lakes actually went up something like uh, between a foot and three feet, depending on the lake. So I'm not sure where all that water is coming from. I can see where it's pooling. I don't know where it came from though. But I think the plan is we might end up in this one low spot against the concrete. That might be a sump pump. And then it'll pump from here and then we'll just have like either there and out or up and out. That is a big reason why we decided to not do this concrete the whole way. And like at the back do concrete the whole way. One was to form it. Basically, you would have to do this anyway, width-wise, but then go up and whatever. More expensive, more concrete. Also, you can't just put holes through concrete. This, we can blast holes wherever we need because there's so much unknown. So, I mean, sump pump hole or whatever you want to call it. Boom, just drill a hole there, whatever. Pump it outside. And the nice thing is, I mean, it's all downhill, right? So... Once we come outside with that, it would just run under here and then just right into the pond. Not too bad. Good afternoon. We have walls. Look at that. The living room walls coming together. We have the master bedroom mainly framed most of the interior framing has actually been done now we did find though a few things that weren't quite thrown in right so this is the where the bed's gonna go window on either side so this stud wall here should be a foot over so right now that leaves us only three foot eleven inside to inside of the wall to uh, have our sink and then walk in to get into where the shower and toilet's gonna be. So they're gonna move that over because that's just out a bit. They, what else do we have? So, oh, our doorway here. The plans got misread. So they read where the stairs are going as where the door was going. So they framed it in there and then realized so they've, framed it in here but now they have to cut that out and then they have to basically sheet over that and then put the insulation over where they originally had the door but this is where the doorway for the mudroom is going to be 
Then we have our closet. We have the mudroom and then this. So in the drawings, we have it for a three foot door, but it's gonna be a sliding barn door. And I guess they interpreted that as doing a three foot door that slides. So they made it a six foot two opening rather than just a three foot opening. So they're gonna get that fixed up there. This here, I believe there was a low spot in the floor. So they're using the torque leverage of the board to try and pull it up, push that down, pull that up, something like that, get the floor leveled out a bit because things move. But yeah, they got this craned in and I was going to show you, they brought in, I wasn't here to see the crane though, but they'd managed to drive in through the mud, over the boulders, through the mud, and right up into the rock here and then reached over, which was, that would have been neat to see. I guarantee you it wasn't easy. I bet you anything that they, looks like they just kept spinning out and getting stuck, so would have been pretty funny. And then, oh yeah, this wall here, this one gets dropped in there. So that one's gonna go right up also. Um, we have the floor trussing coming next week, I believe. And we chose to go with a 14 inch tall webbed truss. So instead of an eye joist, which is basically OSB with a two by four top and bottom to make like a wooden eye beam, so to speak, we're going with a truss design. So it's two by four top and bottom, I believe. And then it's either two by four making a truss throughout the center of it or two by two, maybe. I'm not sure. We'll have to see when they come. But the idea with that is they're a little more expensive. Um, they have a little bit of a higher fire rating. So, you know, on a long-term build, not that we want to have fires, but, you know, it'll be a little bit better. Um, and then the other big reason is then if you imagine having all of those running this way in the house, you can't run any of you, your utilities through the floor going that way or this way unless you do the webs. Then you can go in between the webs with your electrical, your plumbing, your HVAC, all that kind of stuff which just makes it so much easier to build. So that's what we opted for. Look at those views. Ooh, island. It's gonna be so nice. You can actually see now when you're coming in on the driveway, you can see just the peak of that over the ridge as you're coming down the road. So I imagine if, you know, you have this is gonna run to this all vaulted at that angle. Fireplace is gonna go here, as you can see. But then from here over, that's where we're gonna have that catwalk, which then will be on the other side of these stairs. Stairs are here. So you're gonna go up the stairs. Oh, and this here, so we have a door here. This will be, you walk in underneath the stairs and then whatever you don't have, you know, blocked off by the stairs running up, we'll have a little bit of extra storage down here too. So that'll be, that'll be nice. The big thing is just storage, right? Especially when you live out in pretty much the middle of nowhere, you just need, need places to put stuff. So now we got under the house, we've got under the, uh, stairs we'll have a bunch, every room we kind of have planned to have a bunch, and then the kitchen. The kitchen we went, big but we're gonna go with like you know basically cheap ikea kitchen stuff because that's what we can afford and it's it's a big kitchen it's lots and lots of storage and then the island is going to be all ikea stuff too so put it together ourselves, which saves tons of money um and then yeah i mean it looks pretty good the reviews are say it's pretty good so i guess we'll be doing our own review on it Ooh, baby. Just, just look at it. So we're trying to get some water out. Got the sump pump going. Yeah. Look at all those. I don't know if that's mosquito larvae or what the heck that is. But got the generator with the core, with the sump pump out the door. I mean, this would probably be where we could put a pump if we needed to. I just slapped one in, got it from my dad there, but 
It's working. Had a little spare time today. So we're dealing with a lot of odd drainage situations here because we have so much bedrock. When you have water coming along, it can't go into the bedrock. So you either have to raise up like I did here and put tons and tons and tons of gravel, like over a foot of gravel on top of the rock, which then allows it to you know, filter along the rock, but the top stays dry. Or you have to dig it right down to the rock. So we're kind of in between here. But we have this whole area that drains around the house. And it kind of comes to here. And this has just been muck. Muddy nastiness. So today, you can just see with all the rain we've had. So I dug from the bedrock there to catch it. And I just goon spooned with a spade all the way along to about here and this is where I've already uh, made this portion before but it's flowing letting some water out and then at least that way now we'll have like another 10 feet of area that'll be you know dry enough to stack materials and you know where the <laughs> crane drove through that's actually where I made the one ditch because he pushed right to the bedrock he was so heavy he just squished right down but yeah no it's not just uh not just the building work that happens it's all the supporting stuff around that uh you don't really think about and once you get going it's like oh wow uh everything is flooded so we stacked up a bunch of materials up there just to keep them dry but yeah with all this rain like you can just see it like this doesn't even see it's flowing right there but it's that's bedrock it's just this all this area is just so wet that it's all draining this way but it doesn't go under the house as far as we can tell so that's good another scary move getting the shower from here into the tiny little hole by the ladder so wish us luck thanks to my dad and tegan we got it in that was First dinner in the new house on our temporary dining room table. They were working on, they have the LVL across the kitchen here, big beam. So we thought that this was gonna hang down when we were originally designing it, but then we decided to go with a larger beam that's shorter, so it's all 14 inch to match with the actual floor joist so that way we can just finish the drywall off nice and straight um you won't have like a drop down thing or anything like that it won't look weird but yeah you can start to see how it's gonna look look at that Ta -da. they got this door framed in now this is where our stairs are gonna be going up this is just temporary that'll be open right stairs will go up and sit on top of that floor joist there, I believe. Yeah, look at that. You got that door framed in to the three foot size. What else they got going on? I think that's about it. Yeah, but yeah, first dinner, pizza. Another beautiful evening. We have more updates. We have beautiful view. No, that's not what we're here to look at. We have walls, main floor, all up, tall walls. One more tall wall to go in there. We have master bedroom all framed in. Gonna get bed in here, nightstand, nightstand. They have 
a couple studs knocked out still just to get around in here so they have a stud knocked out here they have one knocked out here and i believe over there they have one knocked out they just left some openings so that they can get around a little easier and they got well we got the shower in here ourself i was showing you that with the sketchy tractor up the uneven rock that just it was a little bit of a pucker moment a couple times but today they got the floor sheeting on all but a couple sheets they got a couple more over here to do they got lvl is in i'm gonna climb up there and show you guys what it looks like i haven't been up yet i'm getting pretty excited oh yeah and then i think i'll show you this in another video but all these interior walls are all done this here um so what's reference there okay so this is our door that's where they framed it in but it's here anyway you walk in through the mudroom door this is where we're going to be coming in all the time this is going to be storage closet or utilities not sure um, whatever utilities we can't fit downstairs we'll put right here but then next to the door so if this is your door we have space for like chair bench thing and then we're gonna run on this wall uh, we're gonna build our own kind of like lockers um, where you have you know a storage cubby up top then there's like dividers and either what i'd like to do is i'd like to do a bar that goes you know crossways and then you can put stuff on hangers but then also have hooks kind of on the outside edges so you can like you know when i come home with all my you know outdoor stuff i can just hook on jackets and hats and whatever and then you know throw my boots down below and you know have one for everyone and then this opening here this will go underneath the stairs so these are all the the studs for the second story just so they can get at them i guess but uh that's the staircase behind there running up to where the sheeting is so we'll be able to get underneath have more storage because storage is the biggest thing here and then now you can kind of really see we're gonna have maybe a 48 volt freezer here possibly we'll put it in the crawl space if we can and then maybe a fridge here and then washer dryer but yeah this will be what you see when you walk in now that you have the sheeting in so you'll you'll see the living room right from the entryway and then as you come around you'll just get that grand ta-da which will be amazing and then here so this whole side this is where that railing is going to go we're going to make our own kind of hand railing and then that'll be along the left hand side at the top of the stairs too but then this is going to be a wall so this is just going to be a tall wall so we can hang up whatever we want to put on the walls there we can do art and do i don't know <laughs> lots of wall space let's take a look up top actually before we get up top so the these are the floor trusses that we chose to go with so there's two different styles you have this is like a uh, truss style so you have you know webs or trussing or whatever the other style is where you have the chipboard and i think i was explaining this before but yeah you can put through all these openings you can run whatever you need mainly it's like hvac stuff but you can run ducting through all these openings and it makes it way easier otherwise say if you're running this way there's no problem you can run air ducting right through you have uh two foot on center for these so you have you know 20 something inches in between you can run whatever you want as soon as you have to do a 90 and go the other direction if you have all those eye joists with the uh, chipboard stuff, you can only put so many holes in it and only so many 
at certain sizes. So you're limited. You can't do a lot of cross direction stuff. So you would have to come down here and on the inside of the house, so to speak, you would have to frame in a box and you see that on some, pe some people's houses, you'll have like just a bump out in the drywall that comes down and over. A lot of times it's in the kitchen and stuff where they can't get, you know, ventilation in there. So we wanted to avoid that. This is a way you can avoid it. A little bit more money, um, I think well worth it. The other interesting thing, there's a lot of locations where if you do the eye joist, you have to actually put a warning on the outside of your house for firefighters um, saying that you have that so they will not enter the building if it's on fire because the uh, chipboard will just burn super fast and then when the firefighters go to run in and save you, the firefighters are going to die because they'll just fall right through. So I'm not sure about Manitoba. I don't think we have that. But uh, another thing to consider, let's take a look up here. Holy! Now we got a real view. Oh my! <laughs> Look at. So imagine if you could build a glass house like this, just with a full 360 view. That'd be amazing. Anyway, they got a lot of the sheeting down. They're short, a couple here. I guess a couple of them came damaged. I mean, it happens. So those are on order. Um, yeah, so here, second story now, we have, I think it's about three feet-ish of a walkway. So if you come up your stairs, you'll have railing there, railing all the way to there. There's a window, I believe, at the end of the kind of hallway thing. If I back up here, I'm look from this side. So you're gonna have a, the top of the stairs, this will be like play area, lounge area, whatever you wanna call it. Keep the mess up there so people don't have to look at it. And there's a wall in here somewhere, one bedroom, wall, second bedroom and then if you go left at the top of the stairs this is the uh, second bathroom so you're gonna have bathtub toilet sink it's all just one but that's kind of like the guest and you know kids upstairs or whatever that's their bathroom and then next to that this is a smaller room just just slightly we cheated basically we stole uh, some of the size of room to give the bathroom a little bit more room and then this is the third bedroom or office whatever we end up doing with it so you know how that goes got it if we need it this is this is where everyone is saying that you know Gotta make a room for me in the house, you know, make make a spot, make a spot, and then there's your spot. That'll be it. Everyone who wants to, you know, spend the night here, you either have to, maybe we have to like book ahead in a hotel or something, or you guys have to uh, fight for it. You guys can just wrestle, and uh, whoever wins gets to sleep in the bed. Everyone else will be in the living room. But this will be a super cool view. So if you can imagine you have your railing and then you still have this vault and then the ceiling because that gets kind of sort of complicated. So you're going to have your wall to here, the wall here for the bedroom, right? And then you have your little walkway piece. From this point forward is vaulted. So we're not going to have like a flat over and then up and then over because it kind of takes away from the grandness of it all. So we just had the roof trusses built so that it kind of comes back inside. They're inset a bit, then it runs out from there. And then we have a chandelier that we bought for like dirt cheap from I think Home Depot. 
got shipped out of the states i think it's a like a nine light chandelier matches another light that i think is going to go down stairs somewhere i can't remember where it's going but it was like 90 bucks 90 bucks taken found online like the cheapest of cheap everything else is like 500 dollars or something for a stupid chandelier so we're going to do a chandelier and then we're going to do a ceiling fan with uh no light on it just something to help blow some hot air back down the other thing so this wall here is going to be a load bearing wall so it's going to be two by six so you can put ventilation inside of a two by six wall so what i want them to do if they can is kind of at this upper portion i want them to put a, a cold air return vent here to then draw hot air down through that wall go through they will probably have to bump out just at the bottom like i was saying down there but it's in the office so who cares and then go down into the rest of the ventilation system so in that way this will be where the heat wants to collect it'll suck that heat down and bring it into the crawl space and help just circulate the air better in here um, obviously with being off grid uh, your air conditioner draws a ton of power so typically when it's hot it's sunny like today it was like plus 30 or something and uh lots of sun so so i've been told should be able to produce enough power and charge batteries and run ac keep the house cool at night you might have to like turn it off for the night or something uh we'll figure that out maybe we have to open windows at night i grew up in a house with no ac and we just open the windows at night let it cool down and then you just close them in the morning and if you didn't you got in so much crap because then the whole house was hot and then everyone else was just screaming at you so you learn but that is where we are at so they're gonna bring those last couple of sheets tomorrow and then yeah here's all those studs hey so they can just grab them up. It's a good idea. Just pull them up through the stair opening and then start on the, the walls. Because you're going to have two by six wall all on the outside. Then this wall here, I think this wall is a plumbing wall. So that's two by six. That wall is two by six because it's load bearing. No walls, no walls. And maybe even that wall, the one for the uh the bedroom there part of that maybe that whole wall is two by six because i think that there's a load transfer that happens across or so, something like that i have to look at the drawings again but look at that sunset but yeah i just thought i'd give you guys one more update Next update will be hopefully uh, when we have the roof all on and who knows, maybe windows and doors or something like that. Those are all in. They're just sitting at the lumber yard, just have to be brought here and put in. Those are getting craned. The roof trusses are gonna get craned. Um, that last little wall, that has to get craned. What else are they craning? Oh, and then we've been working on the, uh, so on the gable ends. So this gable end, the gable's like, so if that's flat, I mean, really it's up there is where your uh, actual truss is gonna be coming down, right? But anyway, in this area here above the windows, uh, we are gonna have a fake, timber frame gable truss thing so it's steel plate in the center and then it's going to be uh, uh, three by six treated brown to make you know like where it's across the bottom comes up the middle and then two out at an angle so we're going to use just six by sixes chop them in half down the middle so they're lighter because they're just to look nice and then that'll nail into the ladders off of the overhang so there's gonna be one there it's a smaller one and then the wall here so this will be the wall when you drive in so it's just a big blank 
gable. So we're just gonna add in a timber frame thing there too, just to make it look a little prettier. And it's, I mean, that's something that uh, Tegan and I can do ourselves. Whew. Yeah, once they're working on the roof, you're definitely gonna wanna wear uh, harnesses because I think, so this is the tall corner. I don't know if you can even get a idea of how high this is. I want to say it's probably, well, what are we, we're 10, 18, plus the bottom. So we're like almost 20 feet just here. That's nuts. But that's what... Dealing with rock, I mean, like I said at the beginning of this, it's, you know, we didn't know what we were going to run into when we were getting everything set up for the step forming and stuff. It's, it's the way it panned out. And I mean, we got more storage, but yeah, it just makes it a lot taller. But uh, anyway, that is it for 80 acres. And thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. I wonder if I ran fast enough. If I could clear the, nah, probably shouldn't.